Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about uh, our uh, daily current affair based MCQ series in which what we do we daily discuss MCQs uh, uh, daily and uh, those MCQs are based upon your current affairs of the day. So today is 16 September so let's see what are the questions for the day. So first question is which of the following may lead to increase in exports? A. Appreciation of Indian Rupee B. Depreciation of Indian Rupee C. Increase in crude oil price D. None of the above So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct so friends there is no point in saying that I think the answer is B because obviously uh, it is shown on your screen that the answer is uh, B. So solution is B uh, that is uh, depreciation of Indian rupee may lead to increase in exports. So these uh, the, these are basically fund basic fundamentals of e economy you, which you must understand. So basically currency depreciation means the loss of a country's currency with respect to one or more foreign reference currencies. Typically in a fo uh, floating exchange rate system. So it is most often used for unofficial increase of the exchange rate due to market forces though sometimes it appears interchangeably with devaluation also. So it is basically linked with market forces but uh, sometimes we can also uh, that countries deliberately do devaluation to for the purpose of different uh, for to achieve different uh, uh, aims. So it's opposite can uh, it, it's opposite and increase of increase in value of a currency is currency appreciation. So depreciation of a currency refers to de obviously as I have told you. So uh, when Indian rupee depreciates, the Indian rupee becomes more competitive because the price of the Indian goods when exchanged to dollar will be cheaper, leading to a larger Indian export. On the other hand, US that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, US that den denominates its goods and services in dollar will have lost competitiveness to the Indian rupee. The price of American products denominated in dollars will thus become more expensive in India. So this is your first question. Let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statement uh, related to merchandise export uh, from India scheme. First, the scheme is part of foreign trade policy 2015-20. Second, it is implemented by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. So friends, both of these statements are correct. Answer is C, that is both 1 and 2. So uh, basically, uh, this government of India has introduced this merchandise export uh, uh, from India scheme uh, through the foreign trade policy 2015-20 with effect from April 1, 2015. Uh, so basically, uh, this uh, now scheme has been uh, it has been proposed that it, it has to be revamped. So it is a result of major consolidation and simplification. So five different schemes were there that uh, that were rewarding merchandise exports. So they were consolidated into one. So uh, the uh, the scheme uh, schemes were consolidated as well as simplified. So it provides a incentive rates. So rewards under uh, this are payable as a percentage of uh, realized FOB value uh, for of covered exports by way of uh, MEIS duty credit script. Uh, so this script can be transferred or used for payment of a number of duties, taxes including the customs, excise, service tax. So more details you can read in the PDF. Next is allocation and product coverage. So it covers uh, nearly 49.14 tariff lines. So product and market com uh, coverage is also uh, comprehensive uh, uh, with an anno annual allocation of rupees 18,000 crore by the Department of Revenue. So this is about your uh, scheme uh, and uh, fourth is duty credit scripts are freely transferable and usable for payment of custom duty, excise duty and service tax. So this ensures flexibility. Uh, so incentives are available for special economic zones. Next is third question. Consider the following statement related to Export Credit Guarantee Ex uh, Corporation of India. First, it is headquartered in Mumbai in Maharashtra. Second, it uh, provides export credit insurance support to Indian exporters and is controlled by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct. Yes, it is uh, headquartered in Mumbai, the financial capital of India. So Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India it basically provides credit insurance support to Indian export, uh, exporters who are engaged in the business of uh, exports and uh, uh, it is controlled by Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So both the answers are correct. Solution is C. So it was established in 1957 with the aim of advancing exports from India by giving credit risk insurance and related services for exports. 
so these are more details so you can read about them uh, by pausing the video next is here consider the following statements related to judges appointment removal and transfer first the judges are appointed by appointed by the president after considering the recommendation of collegium second the judges are transferred by the president based on his own discretion so we have to choose that which of the above statements is uh, correct so friends uh, let me tell you that first statement is correct yes judges are appointed by the president uh, and uh, uh, these judges are uh, uh, based uh, they are not uh, discretionally appointed by president but rather uh, uh, it, it they are appointed on the recommendation of collegium but the second is wrong so judges cannot be transferred by the president based on on his own discretion so the solution is a that is one only so more you can detail uh, you can read it uh, about in indian polity by lakshmi kant Let's, uh, let's move to the next question. Next is consider the following statements related to Finance Commission. First, Article 280 of Indian Constitution empowers the President to constitute Finance Commission every five years. The President has constituted 15th Finance Commission headed by Shri N. K. Singh. So, which of the above statements is correct? So, we have to choose the correct statement. Yes, friends, both of these statements are correct. Article 280 of the Indian Constitution empowers the President. And uh, uh, this is uh, your president has constituted 15th Finance Commission headed by Shri N. K. Singh. So the solution is C. So sixth is uh, Kong Thong village known for its whistling language seen in news is located in which state? A. Madhalya, B. Manipur, C. Mizoram, D. Sikkim. So friends, uh, the answer is A, that is Maghalya. So this village is known for its whistling language because uh, people communicate uh, here in uh, whistling town. So whistling villages of Maghalya, they are, uh, it has, uh, it, this Kong Thong village of Maghalya has approached the government for initiating uh, the procedure for its inclusion in the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage. So here villages have a practice of giving each child a unique tune instead of a name. So uh, this is very uh, a kind of uh, we, you can say strange thing, but yes, it is interesting thing. So the tune is called Jingar Jingar Bai uh, uh, B in the Khasi language. So mothers compose a tune for her child until they attain a certain age to be called by normal name. So some villages around Kongthong also follow similar practice. Those villages are also claiming for recognition by UNESCO. So the area comes under the Sohra Hima traditional administrative unit headed by uh, uh, CM or chieftain. So Khattar means an area belonging to 12 clans of the Khasi community and Shong means village. So 2017, 2017 UNESCO had put Turkey's whistle language on the list of intangible cultural heritage in need of urgent safeguarding. Next is consider the following statements related to official language in India. First article 343 of the Indian constitution defines, defines the official language of India in union as Hindi with Dev, Devnagri script. Uh, second, uh, Article 351 empowers the union to promote uh, 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 to promote the spread of Hindi. So here, uh, which of the above statements is correct? So there is spelling mistake. Uh, so uh, both of these statements are correct, friends. Article 343 is there where the definition is that uh, it defines the official language as in of Indian Union as Hindi with Devanagari script. So yes, uh, uh, it also empowers, or uh, rather, we can say. More properly, it 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 it, it uh, imposes a duty upon the union to promote Hindi as a lingua franca of India. So the solution is C. That is both one and two. So reference you can see in Indian polity by Lakshmi Kant. Next is with reference to Lok Adalat. Uh, consider the following statements. First is it is a statutory body created under Legal Services Authority Act. Second, its decision is final and there is no pr provision for further appeal, but they are free to initiate litigation. So we have to choose that which of the uh, above statements are correct. So solution is C, both 1 and 2. Uh, so this is uh, your uh, uh, more detail you can uh, see in Indian Polity by Lakshmi Kant. Next is consider the statements related to horticulture crop banana. First, India is the world's number one producer followed by China in the second position. In India, Tamil Nadu is the largest producer of banana. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. So let me tell you friends uh, that both of these statements is, are correct. India is the number one producer of banana uh, followed by China and uh, 
Tamil Nadu is the largest producer, so bananas are predominantly produced in Asia, Latin America and Africa. So biggest producers are India, which produced 29 million tons per year, so on average between 2010 and 2017, followed by China. So it has uh, it is it has a great gap with China. So obviously India is the leading producer. So then uh, Tamil Nadu is the largest producer among Indian states. Next is polluter paid pr principle seen in news is related to a environmental law, b space debris management law, c a zone related low d none of the above so friends here the answer is environmental low so this uh, polluter pay principle you might have uh, this uh, heard this phrase so polluter pays principle is the commonly accepted practice that those who produce pollution should bear the cost of managing it to prevent damage to human health or the environment so for example if a factory produces a potential a poisonous substance as a byproduct of its activity uh, it is usually held responsible for its safe disposal so it is regarded as a regional custom because of the strong support it has received in most organization for economic cooperation and development and uh, european community countries so it, this principle was propounded in oecd guiding principles concerning in, uh, international economic aspects of environmental policies 1972 so India has time and again vouched for the implementation of polluter pays principle on international carbon emissions. So for the ex-chief justice of India, Thakur had said that an international framework should be evolved to apply the polluter pays principle to advanced economies like the US. So this is about friends today's discussion of uh, uh, these uh, uh, daily MCQs. So, if you like this, the the like like the video, uh, like the questions. If you like the video, then do ensure that you like it. Do ensure that you share it with this video with your friends. And lastly, friends, if in case you want to remain in touch with our uh, various initiatives, then you can join our public Telegram channel. The link of which is shown on your screen and will also be provided in the description box. Rest, friends, if you have any queries, if you have any doubts, you can mail us at achieveies21 at the rate gmail dot com, or you can also contact us at our number that is 896 so if in case you want to ask the query you can ask in the comment box as well or you can also ask personally to us so also friends if in case you want uh, if you want the pdfs of these discussions then you can mail on these details uh, by using these details and then also you can check the description box where the subscription link is given for the purpose so obviously there is a fee for uh, subscription fee for it that is rupees 99 per month so it has been kept for the purpose so that we people remain motivated to help you people so that consistency consistency remains there so if in case you are interested to join then do ensure that you contact us or you do ensure that you check the description box for the subscription link so this is all about today's video do ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day ahead